Hello and welcome to this video on creating drop-down lists from WMI queries inside of TS GUI. Um, now this is a new feature uh, that's going to require um, at least version 0.9.4.0 uh, to make this particular part work. Now the main driver for me to actually develop this particular um, option is was to build a drop-down list based on the disks that were installed in the machine. So if you had more than one um, physical drive, you or, um, you could select from the drop-down which disk you actually wanted to install Windows on. Um, so that's what we're going to run through today is the um, bit to add to your config.xml to build that list um, and in the process show you um, the different parts of the XML involved um, so that you can customize it as you um, see fit. Um, so in the config uh, examples.xml there's this new piece um, of XML here and the variable that we're looking at is the OSD disk index. Now that's a, a default uh, SCCM task sequence variable um, and what that's going to do is effectively um, override the uh, disk ID that you set in your position um, partition disk steps. So this one here. Um, so if we set that that's to say ID 1, then it's going to install to ID 1 instead of ID 0. Um, and same thing here. So that's the variable that we're going to set. And basically what we need to be able to do is grab out the available disks from WMI, um, put them into a nice drop down list and return the correct disk ID um, for the, the disk that we select. Um, now to give us a bit of um, visibility on what we're looking at on this machine, just in terms of what we're um, working with. If we run up disk part and type list disk, so this is the SCCM server, um, and we have five disks. This is a virtual machine, but it's got five disks assigned to it. Um, so in our drop down list, we should see each one of those. And there's the associated disk IDs that we would expect to be assigned to the OSD disk index variable. Right. Now, the GUI option is still a standard drop down list. Uh, what um, is going to be different compared to um, your standard drop down list? Whereas here we've got option, 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 and that's what builds the list for us. In our uh, new drop down list, we're going to have a query instead. And that's going to give us multiple options um, automatically and that's going to auto populate. So the first thing we need to do is build our WMI query. Now, for those of you that aren't particularly uh, familiar with WMI, um, this is going to be uh, potentially a bit beyond your skill set. Um, but if you can build a WMI query that gives you the desired results, um, you'll get this thing set up fairly quickly and easily. Um, so in our config examples, we already have this whole query um, set up already for you. So you could just copy and paste this in as you um, as is and you'll get a nice drop down list. And that's what I've already done here. So what I'm going to do is actually run you through each individual part of it. So here is our WMI or our w, WMI query language or WQL. And just so you can kind of see a bit more of what's actually in there. I'm going to change this a little bit and go select star rather than just those three um, fields and I'm going to get rid of this clause here. So this is going to give us everything from Win32 underscore disk drive. Um, just for those of you who are not aware this tool is WBM test. Uh, it's a little um, WMI query tool built into Windows. 
Right, so if we run that particular query, we get back our five drives. Now each one of the objects in this list here, that's going to be one thing in our drop-down list. And if we double click on one of them, down here we can see all the properties that are available to us from within each one of those objects. Now the thing we're interested in is the index. That one right there. So the index is the thing that we're going to be using as our value that's going to get assigned to our variable. So that's our most important thing to remember. Now just to identify it actually in the drop down list, we need a little bit more information. Otherwise it's just going to be ID zero and it may not actually be that useful to the end user. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to have a look at the size. So we return that to the user. Now that's obviously um, by the looks of it, I think that's in bytes. Um, so we're going to need to do a little bit of math on that to make that a bit more readable. And by default, I'm also grabbing the caption, um, which may help identify the disk if you've got um, two different sorts of physical disk. In this case, they're all virtual disks, so they're all going to be the same. But you may have, um, say, uh, an SSD drive versus a spinning disk, and there may be um, some useful information in that caption to help identify those disks for you. So those are the three things um, that we're interested in as far as putting into our uh, drop-down list. The other thing to be um, that we're going to be interested in is that we only really want fixed hard drives here. So we also are interested in this media type bit and that's going to go into our where clause here. So that's that's the information that we're interested in and that's where this query has come from. So we want to get the index, caption and size properties from the win32 underscore disk drive class where the media type is fixed hard disk media. So that'll give us all the fixed disks. If you um, wanted to, you could potentially add additional conditions to here to say um, where the disk is of a certain size or at least a certain size, um, depending on your requirements. Um, but for a basic drop-down list, in a lot of scenarios, that's fine. So if we actually return, sorry, if we actually run that query on its own, let's actually run that through and see what we get back. Query, apply, and now we're only getting back our three properties that we actually want. Now it doesn't actually really matter if you put star in here, we're actually going to select the properties we want anyway down here. Um, it's just for um, you get a little performance um, improvement but the, the difference will be negligible um, so it's not really worth worrying about. Right, so that's the, the query and what we're getting back from the query. Now what we need to do is format the data in a way that's useful to us. So the first thing we um, you need to be aware of is down here we can see there's a bunch of property um, tag set. Now each one of these uh, matches up to one of these properties here. Um, and they're read from top to bottom. Now the first one in the list is the property that's going to be set to the value of our variable. So that's very important to remember. The first property in the list is going to be assigned um, to the variable. It's not actually going to appear in the drop-down list at all. So that's why you see property name equals index first and then you see it again right after. So the first one's going to be the value, this one's going to be the first thing that's going to be assigned 
um, into the text of your drop down list option. So there's our value, that's one that's nice and easy. Everything else down here is going to get to um, all the, the values of those properties are going to get read in and concatenated together into one um, big long string separated by a comma or whatever you put in here for your separator. So if you don't put this here at all, you'll get a comma with a space. Um, otherwise, you can set it to whatever you like. And you'll, you'll kind of see what I mean in a minute. Now, the next thing we need to do is when that value comes out, that index value comes out, it, all it is going to be is the number zero. Now, to make it a bit more readable, we want to put something in front of that to give it a little bit of identification. So here, that's what the prefix option is for. That puts something in front of that value um, before um, we have a separator and before you go into the next option. Let's actually run it up so you can actually see what this looks like in action. And let's do this. Now you can see here that it says ID colon zero. So the index, that's our index, zero, and it's being prefixed with ID colon space. Then we have a comma and we move on to our next property. Now the next property is the size. And if you remember that was that came back as bytes rather than you know gigabytes or megabytes or something that's a bit more readable. So what you actually need to do is do a little bit of math on this thing um, to make it more readable. So here we have a calculate function. Now what this does is it takes the value that came back from the from that particular property. If you use the value part here, and then whatever math you want to apply to it. In this case, we're going to turn it from, I think it's bytes, into gigabytes. So the value divided by that great big number there. And we've got, we want two decimal places back. Um, if we wanted to, we could say four decimal places just for kicks. Let's tweak that. Run it up again. And now we have four decimal places in our return result. So that is a basically a straight calculate um, function and it's fairly um, self-explanatory. Uh, the main thing to be aware of um, is that this is a proper um, maths calculation. It's not a left to right calculation um, that you sometimes see in other um, bits of technology. So things like um, multiplication and division will be um, processed before addition and subtraction. So you, your typical rules around brackets, exponents, um, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, that ordering does apply. So again, just set your value and then whatever maths functions you wanted to do on it. Um, prefix again, this thing is um, actually empty, so let's just get rid of that. And just like prefix, there's also an append thing for putting uh, a little bit of text on the end. In our case, we just want to mark it as gigabyte, so let's append GB on the end. So that's where that GB comes from. Let's set this back to two, because four decimal places is a bit much. And then finally, we have the caption, which in this case is just Microsoft Virtual Disk, um, and we're not doing anything to that. And there's our separator at the end. If we wanted to change that to, say, a space, a dash, and then another space, we can do that.
and now our separator has changed within the GUI. And then we have the end of our query. So that's basically the, the query from top to bottom. If we actually run this up now, and let's select ID disk ID 1, which is 34.99 gigabytes, uh, and it's a virtual disk. And you can see here, OSD disk index has been set to 1. And that's basically how that works. So now let's actually try this thing in action. So here we are in our WinPE. And if we kick our build off, TS GUI starts up. Now this virtual machine has a um, two disks installed, a 50 gigabyte disk and a 60 gigabyte disk. Now, if we had just kicked off the build um, without this option implemented, um, that would have installed to the 50 gigabyte disk. So just for testing sake, uh, actually before we do that, just to be doubly sure, let's clean the disks off so that there's no confusion around what's happened and what's being done. So, and now let's select our disk ID 1, the 60 gig disk, and let it build. So now this is going to go off and build a machine for us um, onto that second disk rather than the first, which is a nice option to have. Now just one thing um, I'll just bring up, um, just around things like um, default values. Um, in this instance, because we're getting a nice uh, simple index number back, um, we can set a default value and that will be fairly consistent in its behavior. Now, obviously, if you're building this with um, some other uh, return value that's much more um, inconsistent and hard to predict, um, now the usefulness of setting a default value, um, you, you know, you'll, get diff you'll get varying mileage out of that. Um, in this instance, it works fine. Um, now, if you're using this OSD disk image, this OSD disk index um, variable, um, I usually set that to a default value of zero. Um, you could also use groups um, to enable and disable that, and then sort of purge, um, use the purge inactive option to clean that variable out, so that whatever you set in your task sequence will be um, set. Will basically win, or will not be overridden, I should say. Um, however, setting the default value may um, give you the exact same behavior depending on how your task sequence is configured. So just have a bit of a think about how you want to um, structure that and put it together. So now we're just going to let this task sequence run and we will see what it looks like when it's finished. So here we are in our finished Windows 10 build. Uh, you can see Windows has been installed onto the 60 gig disk. And if we come into computer management um, and have a look at our disks, you can see our disk ID zero hasn't been touched. So that's um, how to build drop-down lists inside a TS GUI from WMI um, to allow you to be a bit more dynamic in how you do things. Uh, if you have any queries um, or um, feedback, bug fix, um, finding bugs, anything like that, um, please get in touch in, on the 20road.com website. Thanks very much.